having an effect on uh, the future of evolution? Deliberate manipulation of genes and the future of evolution. Um, the Darwinian algorithm has two parts to it. There's, there's random mutation followed by non-random selection. And for, for a long time, humans have been manipulating evolution by the selection half of the equation. That's artificial selection, the breeding of cabbages and cows and dogs uh, and um, all the domestic animals and plants, and really transforming them dramatically. I mean, Darwin studied pigeons. Uh, if you look at cows, if you look at the dogs, to, to think that a Pekingese is actually a wolf <laughs> uh, is an astonishing thought, and it shows the power of selection, in this case, artificial selection. But only, it's only very recently that we've been able to manipulate the other half of the Darwinian algorithm, the mutation half. So genetic manipulation is artificial mutation in, in effect. Uh, and um, it's producing already some, some dramatic effects. The transplantation of genes from one kingdom to another in some cases, um, because it, since the DNA code is universal, it's, it's just like copying and pasting a, a computer program from one, you, if you need to solve a square root or something, you copy and paste from another program. Or you can copy and paste paragraphs from one book and put them into another. Um, and you can do that with DNA, because DNA will work. It doesn't, it doesn't care. Fish DNA doesn't care if it suddenly finds itself in a cat. It's DNA, it does its job, but it works which is a remarkable finding. I mean, anybody before the Watson and Crick revolution would have assumed that fish genes and cat genes somehow smell different. I mean, they're just chemically different. It would never have occurred to them that fish genes could actually um, work in some other radically different kind of animal. And they can, because it's just DNA, and the, the, the machine code is identical. Um, so it's a very, very promising technique. Um, it uh, will no doubt revolutionize agriculture, medicine, uh, possibly even human evolution. Although it's a, it's a remarkable fact that during all the time when we've been breeding Pekingese from wolves and, and um, cauliflowers from the wild cabbage and, and roses and, and, and Friesian cows who could, couldn't run because their udders are so large. <laughs> so all the time that we've been doing that, we haven't really made any effort at all at artificial selection of humans. And uh, I don't think we want to. Um, but you know, we could have, we could have bred the, the human equivalent of a Pekingese if we'd, if, if we'd set our minds to it a few centuries ago. Um, and, and I suppose it has to be said that if you wanted to win the Olympic Games in a, a thousand years' time, um, win the high jump, you would mate male high jumpers to female high jumpers, win the sprint, mate male sprinters to female sprinters for, the, for a large number of generations, and you win the Olympic Games. Um, just as racehorses and greyhounds have been, have been um, bred for, for speed. So the fact that we haven't actually done that we haven't used artificial selection, we haven't used that half of the Darwinian algorithm, um, might mean that we might hesitate before using the other half, namely the, the artificial mutation. <laughs>